And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California, and happy Monday. It is a new week of new opportunity, and boy, we have a lot to talk about here. Not only uh, do we have the CPI report coming out tomorrow, which Citigroup has forecasted it to come out at 8.9%, which would be higher than the 8.5% last month. Um, however, others are forecasting it to be lower because gas prices are down. If you got Ethereum up in the background here, the market has had quite of a bit, quite a bit of a pity, pity bounce, I would say, a bear market rally, if that. And uh, let's just take a look at the price of Brent. And I do think it will help inflation if they can keep Brent below $100 a barrel. And if we start getting back over $100 a barrel, then that is not going to be good for the market as a whole. So what am I looking for here? On a setup like this, I'm looking for some bullish divergence. And what do you know, coming back from this point? No, this point, yes, you're gonna have multiple drives of hidden bullish divergence. And that is when the price is making, excuse me, price is making higher lows compared to this low. And the RSI is making lower lows. And by the way, the RSI is called the Relative Strength Index. It is measuring the strength of a particular move to the upside or to the downside. Uh, one of the basic principles is if you're above the EMA, it's bullish. If you're below it, it's bearish. That is the EMA is the white line, the RSI is the blue line. And you can set up trading view for free by clicking on the link in the description below. Um, what else did I want to briefly explain about the RSI? Uh, this purple area is the bearish control zone. That's when the bears have control. And this is the bullish control zone when the bulls have control. And what I'm going to try and do is kind of go over some basic TA principles every day. In the beginning, um, if you are a little bit new to the charts and the different tools on TradingView, hopefully that will be helpful as well. So bullish and bearish divergence is something that takes quite a long time to understand and then uh, to be able to identify it is the most important thing. But essentially what I'm looking at here is one, two, three, four, five, six. That is an unusual amount of bullish and bearish, <laughs> sorry, hidden bullish divergence Again, price is making higher lows. The RSI is making lower lows in comparison. So uh, what does that tell me? With multiple drives like that, typically you are going to get, and actually I think we even have it present right here. Yeah, coming back from this point, that is gonna be your three drives. Um, coming back from this point right here, so we have one, two, three higher lows on the RSI. And one, two, three lower lows in price. So to me, uh, that could give us a shot back up to $100 a barrel. And that um, would not be good for the CPI print tomorrow. Uh, it looks like the day is going to close here in three hours and 44 minutes. So I don't know if the uh, aftermath of this divergence playing out back up to $100 is going to, you know, affect the prices tomorrow. I doubt it will. In fact, the CPI print talks about inflation over the last 30 days. So for the month of August um, is the question, were gas prices really down that much during August? I think they were. If you uh, hear it from the news media, uh, if you look at the gas prices in California, I would beg to differ. And um, I, so I could actually move this line down here. And yes, so that would be one, two, three drives. Actually, I think that's like four drives. Needless to say, I do think uh, 
it looks like we want to retest this breakdown area or this level at about $100 a barrel um, in the shorter term over the next maybe few days. And that would be invalidated with any kind of a closure back below uh, this wick right here, this prior wick at 92. So gas or Brent getting down um, $95 a barrel currently. I know you didn't come here for that. So what else did I want to talk about? Uh, additionally, this month we have the 75 basis point rate hike, which should come out on the 23rd this month. Um, the announcement to be made around the 21st or the 22nd. Um, the federal funds rate, and this is the big question. The federal funds rate, let's see if we can get a uh, official newyorkfed.org, something official from the Fed here, stlouisfed.org, the balance, tradenomics, um, I think I'm going to go with New York Fed. See if this gives us something here. NewYorkFed.org. I want to see a graph. And let's go one year. Three months. All time. That's the one. That's the one all over the news media. And we're coming in at about 2.5% right now. Or the effective uh, rate says 2.5%. Three, three. So add 70 base, 75 basis points to that. We're going to be at just over 3% for the effective federal funds rate. And that um, is pretty high. And that means mortgages, 30 year mortgages. I heard they're coming in at 6% right now. My friend just bought a condo and I was asking him, you know, what was your rate? 6%, he said, and he had to buy his rate down. Somebody with good credit, somebody that shouldn't have to pay that much. And we just got to remember that was normal, you know, 10 years ago. Um, that was normal, I don't know, 20 years ago for sure. Yeah, look at rates all from 2004. Call it 2005 to 2006, you know, rates were well over 3%, meaning your mortgage rate was probably between 6 and 9%. And so these unusually low rates, and that is, again, don't fight the Fed. When rates are low and they're injecting stimulus into the economy, hey, stocks go up, Bitcoin goes up, vice versa. When they start raising rates and they start, uh, they start raising rates and sucking the liquidity out of the market, I think Biden got his last stimulus, you know, the last trillion dollar stimulus the guy's going to get. He just got it approved. And um, hopefully, you know, we take back the House here come, um, for the midterm elections and no more of these silly stimulus programs are, are out there. Um, but again, you know, this is just to remind myself, hey, what kind of environment are we in? Even though we're in, seeing a bit of a bear market rally right now on Bitcoin, on NASDAQ. And again, that is, here's what's leading the market. It, what's leading the market is the US dollar. And we did point out last week and we said, hey, look, from this point right here, we've got multiple drives of bearish divergence. One, one, two, three, four. And that should give us a shot down to the green actually should be a bit farther um, if we go off of this four drive philosophy at a minimum. Yeah, green 55, the second target 105 uh, for the US dollar. And that should provide as long as the dollar is going down, I'd say the Bitcoin rally heads onwards and upwards for the short term. And I'm going to give some targets for that rally. Um, Additionally, I'll point out, sorry, on the dollar, on the weekly time frame, we have the two drives. 
one, two, two drives of Hidden Bearish Divergence, which should give you that shot to the uh, yellow 21, which is coming in at 105. Does it happen in one day or one week? I don't know. Um, something else I want to point out is this. We have the gaps, the gaps which are being filled as we speak, I believe. There's two big gaps. No, they haven't been filled. There's one here at 109 and there's one here at 109 also. So that's 109 and that's, this one's about 109.62. So currently we've got momentum to the downside on the four hour time frame, and we did take out all the chances for bullish divergence by creating this lower low. We took this, this low out However, you might be able to say that's that's one drive. And coming back from this point here, nope, this point here, yes, we would have one drive. And from this point here, if you could count this as a low, which in my book, that is going to be a low. And that would give us several drives of hidden bullish divergence, which could provide a decent bounce up to fill this gap. Um, so that would be a negative for the, for the markets, for traditional markets and for Bitcoin. If this rally gets extended volatility, however, is maxed out. So telling us maybe the end of this downside move is here. If volatility starts to contract, you would see a mean reversion bounce, and that could get us back all the way up here down to this breakdown level. The dollar is bullish on the macro scale. And again, that's why we're kind of overall bearish on the macro for equities and for uh, Bitcoin as well. And just, you know, giving us a macro target on. This is a monthly time frame here. And uh, I'm just curious if we are getting some bearish divergence coming back from this point right here. And we would have roughly two drives if this does confirm as a local high. But overall, I see the dollar heading up towards this guy um, over the next probably three to six months. Um, it could take longer. This is again, a monthly time frame that could take a year. Um, and we could certainly come back down here um, and retest this breakout level of 102. Um, we could come as low as 95 bucks as long as we are closing above, I'd say, um, yeah, 95 on the monthly. I'm going to be macro bullish. Sorry, let's let's call it uh, 99. As long as we're above 99 on the monthly time frame, I am looking for things to just glide and glide their way onwards and upwards. And this is a volatile a dollar uh, dollar to the upside market. Okay, let's get into Bitcoin. 13 minutes in, I'm going to try and give it to you pretty quick and fast here today. I'll just run through the various time frames, uh, briefly go over what we discussed again last week. And what do I want to look at? First thing is first. Let's take check out the four hour time frame. So volatility is still expanding, telling me, hey, this move probably still has some legs on it. Um, we are just creeping up and creeping up and we don't even have a confirmed local high yet as um, to do that now i would say uh, we need a four hour closure below 21,400 21,400 probably does it for me and that would confirm this as a local high in the rsi here you might consider this a couple drives of bearish divergence but it is more uh, so if that's a high that's a high and this is a high, then you would have some drives. But to me, there's no clear stop and reverse point. Bitcoin is just 
uh, rallying to the upside, gliding its way onwards and upwards. And it looks like we're heading up to that blue box. The next target with any kind of a four hour closure. Actually, this was kind of my line in the sand right here. Uh, this prior Bollinger Band high. Um, if you're more conservative, you'll wait for a closure above 22.610. If that does happen, in fact, I want to move this box a bit higher. And uh, well, let me just drag it up. Now, I think this box more appropriately should be right around here and here. Coming in from this area right over there. Um, if you take your Bollinger Bands off. So a four hour closure back below 22.318. The Stokes will cross back down. Um, right now we are just at the edge of the bullish control zone and we're coming, we're crossing back up currently. And this will close in about 30 minutes. So that is bullish overall for the market. Um, Ethereum is kind of taking a slower leg behind. So is it going to be a buy the rumor, sell the merge event here? Um, as long as Bitcoin is rallying, I think Ethereum probably has some more legs to, to run alongside of it. Um, Ethereum is playing out a bit of a downside move. And so I'm, I'm just going to finish up Bitcoin here. So the shorter term time frames. Um, again, you know, four hour closure above 22.5. And what would the next target be for a short term move? Do I think we stop at 22.8? No, probably at least up to 23.3. And uh, we re revisit this high right over here. Um, now, here is kind of the line in the sand in my book for another kind of massive downside move um, is this guy right here, this high, this prior range high. You can see a pretty easy, uh, clear and decisive range that we were trading in for some time. And any kind of a four hour closure back below 20,500, especially a daily, um, then I am looking for uh, this low to get hit and probably some new lows. So let's line that up on the CMEs. Are there any gaps here? Yeah, there is a gap right here at 21.4. Um, and other than that, it pretty much lines up across the board here at 20,500. Yeah, any kind of a four hour closure back below the green 55 would be good enough for me and we will cross down here. And as you can see, the, the volatility, it looks like we're finally beginning to um, come back down. And that is an indicator that, hey, this, this move may be petering out. Uh, something else to note on the six hour, we are getting the silver cross. So that might give us a little bit more, uh, maybe one more leg higher here. And any kind of a six hour closure back above 22,510 is going to look good for a test up to this kind of region right here around 23, 23, one to 23,595. Um, Let's see what the eight hours doing. Eight hours still bullish and trending. We're above the topside Trollinger band and we'll cross down below 21,599. And this, you know, this market has pretty much been seamless, uh, meaning the one hour, sorry, the two hour is doing what the one hour did. The three hours doing what the two hour did. Four hours doing the three hour and vice versa all the way up. Uh, to a 10 hour here and the 12 hour. Let's see if anything different is happening. So it's a trending market. As you can see, each, each, um, you know, consecutive hourly uh, or sorry, each different time frame is doing the same thing. Everything is moving kind of in concert. 
The eight hour is strongly in the bullish control zone. The 10 hour is doing the same thing and the 12 hour is just getting in. Now, something to note is that usually the first time getting back in, you get a bit of a selling pressure here and uh, stokes are nowhere near crossing down on CMEs. Let's check out the spot price action. So not as aggressive of a read there. And yeah, back to the two day time frame, which we were talking about for some time and saying, hey, when volatility increases on CME, the average expansion, you know, the average, the stokes are going to get the direction of the trend. The average move, once volatility is low and begins to expand, the average is 39% the average move, and then that first um, first standard deviation is 32% to 46%. So does that fall into play? Where, where did expansion occur as we got above the 20 percentile? So let's say it's from this leg right here. The expansion got us 15%. So to me in my book, this was not the average size move. And that is why I was expecting a bit more to the downside. I would say that. And then let's take a look at the two day on this guy here. On the two day. As volatility expanded on spot price and we got above 20 percentile. Depends on what candle you call it off. I think we were measuring it off this candle, which was really the expansion. Once we got over 20% was right here. And, you know, we may need to adjust that and say, hey, once we regain the exponential, that's where we measure that move from. But I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more back testing on that. And that one got us 15%. So not, not even close to the first standard deviation. So the next one I want to bring up here, it, and you know, that's why this is statistical probability, you know, not, it's not always guaranteed to work out the way it has in the past. And that's why you have to have a stop loss in place and a place where you say, okay, my idea failed. Um, yeah, simply put. So five day time frame. Again, we are just getting an expansion here. Five day is going to cross up today above 21.54. Volatility just began to expand. And again, suggesting momentum to the downside. We did not get that move. And that's why we had this target down here. The average price drop once we see expansion on the CME, uh, excuse me, on the spot price. Average price drop is around 42%. We would have expected a 42% drop would take would have taken us down to 11,551. Um, that is just how it goes sometimes. And here is the the big question now is: Are we going to cross back up today? With any kind of a closure above 21,555. And we are well above that. And we are playing out some hidden bullish divergence. And what is that? That's when RSI is making higher lows, but the price is making lower lows. And that is one drive or two drives, if you want to call it that, that gets you a shot to the 21. And in fact, um, I do believe with the way this market has been moving, if we cross up and we see volatility continue to expand, uh, we're going to get more than just a test of this 21. However, if volatility begins to decline and we lose the exponential, so if we come back down here, 
And I actually do imagine that's what it will happen um, after this closure then more likely uh, a failed bounce is in the cards. Uh, so again, a lot to keep an eye on here. And these stokes, this momentum indicator alongside um, CMEs has the lowest read ever. And we will not see this closure for another one day and two hours. So after the CPI print tomorrow, I think it's going to be a big day for the markets and a lot to watch. And I'd rather be, uh, you know, trade neutral, um, essentially flat, not have any positions on going into this thing tomorrow because we don't know what's going to happen. They're fudging the numbers. That's what we do know. And we don't know how the market's going to react, but I'd rather hop on the side of the trade and take the easy trade than just guess. Um, so that's just me personally. That is just me personally. However, these trend lines are lining up pretty nice on CME. We're running in the purple 200. Um, but this is going to be one, two, three, four. That'll be four drives um, of hidden bullish divergence. So what kind of a move would that look like if we measure from here, from expansion? That'd be 75% up to there, 36%, 38% up to 40%. So 40% move, that would be in line with a five-day uh, five day expansion of BBWP for CME. I think it's typically a little bit more. And just for kicks, what else do we have? I believe this last indicator I'm going to throw up here. This one's always for jokes here. Jokes and jokes. We are going to have a bull moon, I think, tomorrow. The uh, new moon is going to be tomorrow. I believe that'll populate tomorrow. Uh, but it does show we are running into a bit of a bit of a selling point right there. The green 55 on CMEs. And this trend line here as well. Could this be a massive descending triangle? Perhaps. And what else do we have on the CMEs present? I'm willing to bet the 618 FIB is coming in right here. If we use Wix, uh, we are going to be right at that FIB line for a more volatile market. Notice how these line up just perfectly. This is where your bull traps come in. So I would say if the 8.9% higher inflation read Comes out tomorrow, uh, probably going to get a rejection here and a bit of a reversal. If not, I do think um, this move could have some additional legs on it. However, again, on the weekly time frame, as long as we are closing below 25,000, As long as we're closing below there, we are still in a weekly downtrend and uh, there is no macro reversal on the cards, in the cards, in my book. That's it for today, guys. Hope you have a good one. Take care and have a blessed day.